It's been over a year that we've been living without a proper full-size shower. And we're getting really close to having a working shower upstairs. So I made this list. And once we get everything on this list done, we will officially be able to take our first shower in our home. First thing on the list was caulk all of the corners in the shower. I actually went ahead last night and got that done so we can start this video off by crossing something off. Oh! <laughs> Long thing. So, with the first thing done, it's time to move on to the second thing on our list, which is runoff collection. We've had some really warm weather the past few days and there's snow melt running off everywhere. So we're gonna try to collect it. We installed this culvert a few days ago and with the flow we have going through it, we decided to go ahead and try to capture the water coming out of it. This is more of a proof of concept than anything and uh, we'll see if we can make it work. This is a hose fitting that I threaded into a piece of cutting board. Well, that's already working better than expected. So now we're gonna go get a hose and an IBC tote. Just gonna start walking down home with it. Uh huh. Let's see it. There's water coming out. <laughs> All right, so this part is a little bit silly. In order to get enough elevation change, we've got to put this thing pretty far down the hill. I can't even, they can't see you because there's... And now we put the hose. We're filling a water tote with runoff. This might seem a little bit silly, uh, but we've learned that hauling water in winter is incredibly difficult. Our road is so steep and um, hauling that much weight on the road, especially during mud season, it, it's just not gonna work. That was successful. Yeah, I think uh, I think we're gonna be able to collect some runoff water. All right, runoff water. We're gonna hold off on water filter until we've accumulated the water. So I think we're gonna skip ahead to shower door. Let's go get it done. There's an airplane above us. Mark 33 and an eighth. X marks the spot. That should be the corner where the two glass pieces mm -hmm. meet. These things are heavy. I'm starting to get the feeling that this is going to be an all day project. Ready? Time to drill some walls. This is a special tile drill bit that we've had really good luck with. We'll put a link down below. These are porcelain tiles. They're super duper hard. We're gonna try a pilot and we'll see if that happens. Let's I'm not planning on dropping it. Are you planning on dropping it? Mm, no, we got this. Feel good or what? It looks really good. Oh. 
Well, the holes all lined up. That was exciting. <laughs> that was a success. All right, one pane down and I think three to go. We're gonna go check on Ambition Springs though. How much water do we have in our tote? Three quarters. All righty. How much water do we have in the water tank? We have like a quarter of a tank. That's pretty cool. Like two hours. We'll come back in a couple hours. These instructions are not, you, I can't even say abundantly clear. These instructions are not clear at all. They're kind of like chicken scratch. You got parts There's everywhere. Lots of parts. And like, if the glass didn't weigh a gajillion pounds, this would probably be easy. But each of these pieces of glass is so heavy. All right, I think we need to bring the next piece up. So now we're going to fully assemble the entire thing so that we can mark a couple of holes and then take it all back apart again. And hopefully we don't break the glass in the process. This door is giving us a run for our money. It is very complicated. There are a lot of pieces and they are heavy and awkward. It's time to bring the largest, heaviest piece of glass up. But it's also the last one. Yeah. Gosh dang, this is heavy. Trust yet that it's not gonna crash. Oh no. Now I'm gonna clean all of the grubby <clears throat> fingerprints off of all of the glass. I got everything absolutely disgusting looking. <laughs> I think that my goal of showering tonight was a little ambitious. But I think that my goal of not breaking the shower door was a really good one. We are getting really, really close to being able to shower. A lot of you had asked where the toilet was going. And the answer is eventually someday right there when we have a septic system. So I think we can officially cross the shower door off the list and that is a good way to end the night. So maybe by the end of tomorrow we can take a first shower in here. Tomorrow's gonna be a good day. We'll see you then. We'd like to thank Strapino Retractable Ratchet Straps for sponsoring this video. If you're anything like me, your ratchet straps probably look something like this. A giant tangled mess. In a past video, we introduced you to the standard Strapino Retractable Ratchet Strap, which has quickly become our go-to strap for all of our everyday tie-down needs. Strapino took the tangle-free ratcheting concept found in their everyday strap and applied it to a new line of heavy-duty straps, which come in both a 10,000 pound version and a 6,000 pound version. And at 27 feet long, this strap is perfect for tying down almost any load. Aside from no longer having tangled straps, the retractable mechanism also means there's no tail to tie. All you do is ratchet and you're done. And I'm excited to try out these vehicle tie down straps. Each strap comes with an axle loop with an abrasion resistant pad, as well as a ratchet strap with the same retractable technology, but this time it includes hook ends with safety clips. 
I think that the 6,000 pound version of the strap is going to be great for strapping down smaller vehicles like a UTV or a four wheeler. It comes with this extra loop on the end of each strap that allows us to wrap the strap around the ATV frame and hook the strap back on itself. So if you're ready to simplify your next tie down job and eliminate the tangled mess of straps in your life, check out the link below to get your very own Strapino retractable wrap to straps. Thanks again to Strapino for sponsoring this episode. I want to say a big thanks to one of our subscribers for sending us breakfast this morning. We love the breakfast kit and are, I'm excited to eat these pancakes. Welcome back guys. It is a beautiful day and we are back on our list today. And next up, we're going to try to take that water that we collected in our IBC tote and get it filtered. I drove down here last night and the tote was already full. So I pulled the hose out so it wouldn't keep filling more mud into there. Look at that, that's a tote of water. like all the mud has settled to the bottom. Oh, so if we just don't agitate it. Yeah. We've got this submersible pump, which we already owned. Unfortunately, the diameter of it doesn't fit in the IBC tote. So we're having to put the water into just a bucket for now. I think if this works, we'll look at getting a pump that we can just submerge right in the tote. I made this adapter with some stuff I had laying around. I'm just gonna try to crack it. Oh, there you go. Oh yeah, I think that's gonna work well. Nothing's happening. But she's also not saying anything. I think this is what she feels like when she's waiting for me to do something and I'm not talking. You good? There it goes. She says it's going. Oh, I hear something. Oh, there it goes. Oh, that's dirty. There's a lot of dirt in this hose though, from try number one. All right, go ahead and shut it off. That's awesome. The black one's like a coarse screen. This one's a 30 micron. We're gonna to try to pump from our dirty tote into one of these and hopefully get much cleaner water. I think it's working. This is awesome. We've got some time to kill, so we're gonna hike up the hill to a spot that we think we might have found a cougar print. Okay, first thing we got, it's a big old elk. That is so cool. Neighbor dude on a snow bike. I am definitely jealous of neighbor dude's timber sled conversion. No kitties, but I'm gonna put a picture of that track because it was easily twice the size of Boone's foot and Boone's an 80 pound lab. The flow has significantly decreased. So we're gonna try to see what these filters look like. This might not be the best way to do this. Okay, well, that filter has barely any stuff in it. I'll check filter number two. This is a 30 micron. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Riley. I never took the wrapper off. <laughs> I really, really wish we'd done that on purpose to make drama, but it's so much more <laughs> embarrassing than that. Riley. I thought I took it apart in the store, but I guess I, I don't know. It's too excited. Really? <laughs> That's really funny. So, it caught a little bit of sediment. <laughs> Oops. I feel better now. I was like kind of disappointed that the water in the 
tank was still so cloudy, but um, that's because it wasn't getting filtered. Okay, let's fire this up again and see what happens. Oh yeah, that's a lot more now. Is it clearer too? It looks really clear. It looks really clear. Should I, should I see if it's clear? How? Stop it. It's gonna be hard to know if it's clear or not because there's dirty water in there. So we're doing really well. Hauling water fresh during the summertime with the army truck is really no big deal. We can just take a few of these totes to town, fill them up. It doesn't cost very much and uh, we're on our way. But hauling water during the winter time and during mud season, I think is gonna be a whole different deal. While drilling a well would be convenient, it is a huge expense. Okay, we're pretty much at the point now where that's all we're gonna get out of this tote. I think we're gonna end up with about uh, 600 gallons of water for showers. And that is a lot of water. <laughs> Now that we're back up at the shop, we have the water from the tote transferring to a tote inside and we're filtering it again, which I think that means we can cross it off the list. Next up. Water heater. Water heater. So this should turn the pump on. Yep. Long term, we'll have the pump long term, short term. Longer term, we'll have the pump hooked up to the EcoFlow, but this will do for now. How much noise do you think it makes on that? Oh. That's not too bad. That's not bad at all. <laughs> Tiny little hole. <laughs> pew pew! <laughs> this time I'm gonna take the wrapper off the filter. This came with a 30 micron filter, which is the same size we've already filtered this water with twice. So now we're gonna swap to a five micron filter and hopefully get the last of the sediment out. Also, I'm pretty sure this is just a thing of yarn. We're using this instant propane camping water heater as a temporary setup for showering upstairs. This is meant to be used outside. It has no exhaust. The exhaust from the flame just comes right out the top right here. But if we mounted this outside right now, it would freeze and break. So we're gonna mount it right here to the side of the tote and then just open the door behind us when we shower. It's a very high-tech mounting bracket. And by mount, I mean zip tie. Well, it's certainly not pretty, <laughs> but I think it's gonna work. I think that that officially means that we have one thing left on our list. Shower drain. And it's the simplest one. <laughs> Done. Okay, maybe not quite that simple. But this might seem silly, but we haven't had a full size shower in a year and we are so excited. So with that, the only thing left to do on our list is turn the water pump on and take a shower. And hopefully everything works. <laughs> Let's find out. I'm upstairs and we're gonna turn the water on and see what happens. Okay, turn it on! Step one, open the valve. And step two is turn on the pump. This is a pressure demand pump, so it should turn itself on and off as it reaches pressure. Okay. We are pumping water. Oh. And the water heater just lit. And the water heater went off. Oh. <laughs> that was a lot happening all at once, but I think it's working. Hopefully, we're hoping nothing happens right now because the valve is off. Okay, nothing happened, so that's good. Oh. No. We got a leak. 
plastic fittings make me nervous. Mm -hmm. We could take it off and try to wrap it in Teflon tape. Mm -hmm. Now we're gonna drain the system and try to get that guy to seal. I wrapped the plastic threads in Teflon tape. Hopefully it doesn't leak this time. Valve on. Pump on. But now it's leaking out of here. And then now we'll reset this up at a spot where it's not under weird tension. Okay, take three. Turn this on. Mm hmm Hook this up. Mm -hmm. Dripping from the fitting on this side. Oh my gosh. I think that stopped the leak. All right. Oh, sorry guys, you can't see me. <laughs> okay, I think we're in business. Time to take a shower. Okay. That makes all of the effort to get that water and set that up worth it because we get to take showers in our home tonight. For real showers, hot showers. Wow. Look at that. Now it's shower time. The water's not getting hot. What do you mean? It was hot for a second and now it's cold. Uh oh. Okay. I took the water heater apart and the thermocouple was never even hooked up from the factory. Crazy. It seems to be working now. So Courtney's gonna try again. That was amazing. I have never felt so relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching guys. And we'll see you next time. <laughs> that oven, man. This